everyone, I'm Sarah McDooling. I'm here today at Booktopia HQ in the Atlantis room with two very special guests, Ashley Barton and Carla Fitzgerald, who are coming today to celebrate Kids Month with us and talk about their brand new released middle grade fiction books. I'll start with you, Ashley. Yes. Ashley, could you tell us a little bit about your new book? Yes, so uh, my new book is called Solomon Macaroni and the Cousin Catastrophe. And it's about a little vampire who I actually came up with him when I was about eight or nine years old. And for some reason, he's just stuck in my head. So now all these years later, I've put him in a real book. Um, <laughs> so basically, he's really friendly, quite timid. He's got impeccable manners. Um, and his parents go on a holiday for 100 years. And Solomon has to go and stay with his uncle, who is the world famous Dracula. <laughs> and this is bad news for Solomon for two reasons. First of all, because he has to stay in Transylvania, spooky, spooky Transylvania. And secondly, because it means staying with his cousins. So Solomon has six cousins and five of them are major pranksters. So they're always pulling tricks on Solomon, which Solomon is just not cut out for. So about way through the story, these five cousins go into a place called the Wild Wood, which is based on a real forest in Romania, uh, which is apparently where a lot of spooky, creepy things happen. <laughs> Perfect setting for a vampire story. Um, and Solomon has to go into the forest with Lucy to rescue them, only to discover that's not the real reason they're there. And so I forgot to mention, which, yeah. <laughs> so I forgot to mention something really important, which is that in Solomon's world, magic has almost completely disappeared. So Solomon is a vampire, and he can live a really long time, but that's kind of it for Solomon. There's no powers or anything like that. So magic is almost completely gone, unless you know where to find it. So. No turning into a bat. No bats. <laughs> It's such a such a charming book. Thank you. And Carla, could you tell us a bit about your brand new book? Yes, absolutely. So, um, How to Be Prime Minister and Survive Grade Five is about eleven year old Harper, um, and what happens when her dad, who happens to be the prime minister, goes missing, and she decides to take his place. So um, there's some pretty big decisions that Harper has to make with her sister Lottie and, and new friend Theo. Uh, for example, should she ban plastic bottles or make weekends longer? This is a tough, tough choice for a kid. Um, and Harper's also navigating um, a new school and some of the dramas that Year 5 can throw up as well. So, um, it's yeah, it's a story about uh, power and families and um, what you'd do if you could change the world because who wouldn't want to do that sometimes? <laughs> Both such great premises for, for a middle grade fiction book as well. Uh, Ashley, you mentioned you came up with the idea when you were really little. Yeah. Could you um, sort of expand on that a little bit, like yeah. where the idea came from? And then I will also be asking <laughs> yeah. Carla a similar question. Yeah, so <laughs> I just have this vivid memory of drawing this little vampire in one of my school notebooks. And I can see him. I can't find it. I have mountains of things I wrote as a kid. and. This is the one thing I can't find. It'll show up. <laughs> Probably when I'm like <laughs> 95. I'll be like, where was this back in 2022? Um, so, yeah, I've just never forgotten about him. And he's always been this very friendly vampire. So when it came to writing his story, I thought he doesn't have the traits of a typical vampire. But he doesn't feel to me like a, a human boy. And the story that I had in my mind didn't really fit a human boy story. So I kind of had to create this world around him where it made sense that he was a vampire, but not quite. So. And was he always called Solomon Macaroni? Always. <laughs> oh, I yeah, love that. I don't know. The, the name is so <laughs> random, but I came it's up with it when I was a kid and it would just be a betrayal of my my that's eight year old name. self to change his name. Change so it, it's yeah. Solomon Macaroni, that's what it is. <laughs> and Carla, where did you first get the idea for this? Yeah, book? so um, th there were a few influences, but I do remember the first spark of the idea came when I was um, helping my son with his speech um, and um, it was you know nearing bedtime I was you know just getting ready for you know my me time and chocolate and tea but he had a speech to do it was um, if kids ruled the world and he was so excited it was you know he'd never been so excited about a speech before I think he was literally jumping up and down on the bed um, <laughs> And he had these ideas and, you know, some were like, you know, free canteen and lollies for all kids. and But some some were like, you know, quite profound. And it just, it got me thinking about, um, well, you know, like, you know, sometimes 
kids have some good ideas. So that was the first spark. And then um, it wasn't until I saw Ivanka Trump appear um, at a meeting of world leaders on, on behalf of her dad. Um, and, you know, that, you know it, it just gave me the what if moment. What if she was younger? Or what if she was a younger child sitting at a table with all these world leaders? And it was, you know, ridiculous and <laughs> funny, but also kind of inspiring. Um, so those ideas sort of came together. And then our, our own former prime minister had some, you know, trip to Hawaii. And there's a, obviously um, there's that influence in there as well. And you just so good. You just thought this is a story. That's and it. You go. That's it. Yeah. it. Came together. <laughs> so um, I wanted to ask you both a little bit about your sort of journey to publication um, and how early you knew you wanted to be an author and um, how that came about. Ashley? Yes, so I think I always wanted to be a writer. So I, as soon as I knew how to write, I was writing stories. I've got like my first book, which I published myself with a hot pink cardboard cover <laughs> you were, it by Ashley Barton, age six. So there's no, there's no contesting how old I was. Um, and then, yeah, I just kind of continued writing forever. But um, obviously it's uh, a tricky thing to, to make a career of. So I had sort of a backup plan, which was I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I studied law and communications. And then I got to the end of those two things and decided I didn't really want to be a lawyer and I didn't really want to work in advertising so I thought I love books so I got a job <laughs> at a publishing house um, thinking it would be a short-term thing but then I fell into marketing and publicity and then ended up having the best job in the world. I had so much fun working on marketing and publicity campaigns for children's books um, for quite a few years and then um, went on maternity leave, had an idea for a pitch book and it kind of has snowballed from there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I feel like I'm. I'm always going to copy <laughs> yes, <laughs> some Um But yeah, I, I did love books and 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 writing as a child. Um, and I studied English literature and law at university. Um, and yeah, I just loved reading novels at, at uni. Um, but I did go into law um, mainly because you know I. I was okay with words and um, I wanted to help people. Um, so I did practice law for a number of years, but um, yeah, the practice of it can be quite difficult. And um, yeah, I when I had my own children, I, I fell in love with children's literature again. Um, I was reading a lot and then I started writing, um, mostly just to, you know, get me through the day in those early stages. And then, yeah, just uh, um, I started to take it more and more seriously. Um, and yeah, so then, um, yeah, I also uh, started with a picture book and um, just, yeah, now I, um, I love middle grade. <laughs> that is amazing. Mm. I also studied law <laughs> and decided to not do law, so here we all <laughs> are. Law, there are so many people in the publishing <laughs> industry who have law degrees. I yeah. don't know what it is. It's true. I, I mean, I, I did not get mine, <laughs> but I, I changed my mind halfway through. But yeah. Well, she made that there's... decision early. I went all the way through <laughs> oh. the day I graduated. I was like, not for me. And yeah. I went way too far. Yeah. I actually tried to. I did it for a bit. Yeah. Too. In an alternate universe somewhere, we're all like practicing law. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like the sound of that one. No, no. Can I not be in that universe? <laughs> so um, you've both published picture books and moved, made the move to middle grade. I wanted to ask you both, you know, what is it about middle grade fiction that really draws you as an author? Yeah. Um, I think middle grade is kind of that sweet spot where kids are starting to understand things more and more and more, but they still haven't let go of their imagination. So you can explore really profound themes, but you can do it in a really fun way and still have a lot of fun breaking rules and letting your imagination run wild. And I also think that was a point in my life, like I've always loved reading, but I just have particularly good memories of reading at that age mm. in my life. Um, and I just remember it so vividly, like being like between eight and 12 years old and what I felt, what I loved, what I did, mm -hmm. all those sorts of things. So I don't know, for me, it's just a really magical time in, in someone's life. So it's really a fun audience to talk to. I, yes, I think a lot of lifelong readers are made in those years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm just going to copy your answer. Sorry. Again. That's, 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 <laughs> I'll let you talk first. No, next no, time. no. no. <laughs> um, you, you can. You've summed it up perfectly. I think. Um, I also was like deeply in love with reading. I think I had an unhealthy obsession with the Babysitters Club around that time, and I just. 
Yeah, as you say, Sarah, I think it's when, you know, you, you make those readers for life. It's just such a special time. And, and also, like you said, Ashley, like the um, kids are really, like, they're smart and they're thinking about the world and big issues and you can sort of, um, yeah, you can, you can deal with all those things in middle grade and I love that. And, um, it, yeah, I just think I love the, the breadth and the depth of middle grade as well. Like, I mean, I wrote about a prime minister that ran away and, um, <laughs> you know, Ashley wrote about, like, this cool, you know, tofu-eating vampire. Like, there's just so much, so much you can yeah. do in this age group. It's just fantastic. I think the other um, good thing about middle grade is it's when kids are properly reading to themselves, mm. um, but they still are happy to be read to. So mm. when I was writing my book, I kept thinking about the adult reader reading out loud to their child or yeah. the teacher reading to their class, which was something I absolutely loved in primary school. Mm. So yeah, it's yes. kind of, it's a good, it's a good all. It's a, it's a magical... Mm. It is, um, yeah. That's exactly the word for it. space in yeah. publishing. I feel like sometimes when I'm feeling a bit low... I just pick up a middle grade book mm. and flip through it and you just get filled with hope. Yeah, yeah that's so, so true. true. Yeah. So, um, I wanted to ask you a bit about your writing processes. Okay. Um, do you have any sort of particular habits or, you know, superstitions or anything that you do around um, where you write and how you write? Definitely no superstitions, I don't think. Do you know, the one place that I was really good at writing, and I don't do it anymore because I don't go to an office, but the train, I was so good at writing on the train. I don't know why, I could just get into the zone, maybe because mm. I didn't have an internet connection, I don't know. No but, interruptions yeah. as well. well you know. Aside from everything going <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, I could just get in the zone on the train, it was so bizarre. But yeah. um, the thing I do now is, um, I still write a lot by hand, and I write on scrap paper mostly, so I'm just like pages oh. everywhere. But when I'm typing, if I'm stuck on a word or a phrase I'll put like an xx and then just kind of keep going so that when I um I can come back and just do like a you know search for xx and then fill in the gaps but then I don't get tripped up or like lose momentum so smart that's like I that's like my that. little I'm gonna steal that yeah because <laughs> yeah. no words are double x I don't think so you're not gonna unless you're talking about like chromosomes or something yeah <laughs> that's true but I don't know if that's ever gonna happen in a book <laughs> yeah. um yeah, um, I feel like, I mean, I, I don't really have a routine. I don't have any superstitions. I, I really write in the cracks. Um, I do, I spend a lot of time thinking. So um, walking is good for me. I'm thinking when I'm walking, even packing the dishwasher. So I spend a lot of time, um, you know, percolating um, ideas and characters. And then when I do find that short window to write, whether it's... Um, you know, night time or, um, you know, the kids are out for an hour and then I can really just go hard. Um, I, I, I never write by hand. I always use the laptop um, and, yeah, that's... It's, I don't really have something, that, an, an enviable sort of routine. I wouldn't recommend it, but it, it works <laughs> for me. <laughs> now, if you were able to bring a character from each of your books to life to hang out with for a day. Would you both pick your main character or would you pick a side character? Side character for me. Yeah, side for me too. Yeah, I would, Who and why? I would pick <laughs> Uncle Dracula <laughs> because he is a lot of fun. He's this like really big hearted character who's always trying to make people happy. And one of his things is uh, wacky inventions that don't always go <laughs> so well, uh, like an ice cream slippery dip machine. So I think he would be a lot of fun. And plus he's lived for 5,000 years. So the, the kind of information you could get out of him <laughs> definitely yeah yeah um I feel like Harper my main character there's so much of me in there that it would just wouldn't be fun to hang out with her <laughs> um so I would hang out with Theo who is um her her friend um who he's all about you know um having a good time and um yeah living life to the fullest and and he has his reasons for that um so yeah I think um he yeah he would bring out my fun side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, same question, but we're going to broaden it to any oh, kids' books, books ever. Oh. Yeah, that is so hard. Oh. As a kind of segue into talking about books you liked when you were a kid. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, gosh. Um, You're turning to music. Color. So, any character I'd like to hang out with mm -hmm. from any book? Yeah. <gasps> um... Okay, well, I have mentioned the Babysitter's Club. <laughs> Which I actually, one? <laughs> I know, this is the thing. I really felt like I was a member of the club. Like, I I mean, those books, t 
taught me um, that if you, as a writer, don't make your, your um, reader care about your character, then, you know, what's the point? Because I cared about them all so deeply, but who, who would I, um, oh, I kind of, I quite like Stacey because she was, you know, she was from New York, so maybe yeah. I'll hang out with Stacey. Um, but I did love a lot of Australian um, fiction as well. Um, maybe Colin from Two Weeks with the Queen. He's got oh. this real like sort of, um, you know, can-do attitude. I think he'd be he'd be fun to hang out with. Um, loved a lot of Judy Bloom as well. Sorry, I'm moving on to the next question. Let's just go with, you know, I'll hang out with the whole Babysitter's bring... Club. <laughs> maybe it shouldn't have been a dinner party question. Oh, yeah. Maybe you could assemble the dinner party. With... Yeah. How about you, actually? Well, that's really tricky. I'm trying to think maybe someone with magical powers just to experience that, but I can't, like, think of which character that would be. So I'm not sure. Maybe Matilda. I loved Matilda. It would be fun to hang out with Matilda. It would be. But I also loved so much Ramona Quimby. Did you read the Ramona Quimby books? Yeah. Did you read those? And I, like, I just always found her such a fascinating character, so it would be kind of fun to... To see what she's like. Mm. Those are some excellent choices. <laughs> ah, Stacey was my favourite. Oh, of excellent! The year. I love the babysitter's little sister. Those oh, those books. Okay. I yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm still upset that they cancelled the Netflix show. Yeah. Tragedy. Oh, I never. I never. Slightly off topic, it. but <laughs> <laughs> still relevant. <laughs> Ah, okay, now, um, this is a kind of an odd question, but I was wondering if you could sum up the general vibe of your book with a phrase or, or a comparison or a theme song or any way you like, what, how would you best give readers an idea of the vibe? Okay, so I think for Solomon, the vibe is very much uh, humour with a bit of heart. My publisher came up with a really good comparison, which was Willy Wonka meets what we do in the shadows. So obviously <laughs> for kids, but yeah. I love that comparison. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'll go with, um, well, I'll go with Australian West Wing meets Two Weeks with the Queen, which I've just love mentioned um, because, um, yeah, it's obviously set um, yeah, in the um, in contemporary Australia, there's politics in it, um, but yeah, it's really about kids just, you know, um, having fun and being wild and doing taking their charge. thing, taking charge, that's yeah. what I'm looking for, yeah. <laughs> I love it. And so now, um, I don't know if you're able to speak about this, but I wanted to sort of ask you both what's up next for mm-hmm. you as in your writing. So uh, next yeah, I've got two books coming. So the next book in my pitch, is pitch book series with Harper Collins, which um, will be How Do You Say Hello? So How Do You Say I Love You's Just Come Out, so Hello will follow that. And Solomon Book Two, which Yay. is set in Paris. <gasps> Paris. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that's been oh, a lot of fun good. research in Paris. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you get to go? <laughs> Sorry. Well, probably not now. <laughs> it's a little bit, tr- <laughs> a bit tricky with sort of three small children oh. and COVID restrictions is still happening, I think. Um, Take some so, virtual tours. Yeah, um, <laughs> and I've been in the past, so I can dig out my yes, old pictures yes. and try to tap into that old memory. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, great. Yeah, it's been fun. Um, I'm a bit more vague <laughs> in my answer. I'm not being invasive, but... Mysterious, um, though. Mysterious, yeah. yeah. So um, I am working on another middle grade. Um, it's contemporary, it's humorous, I hope. But I'm just not quite sure what it is yet. So um, I love it. Yeah, it's... Uh, Yes, I will. I love Let's the. Watch this space. I love the watch this space. That's the word. <laughs> I like it. Keep people guessing. Yeah, and I, I do have you know a few picture books that yeah. I, I always have about ten things on the go. So so do um, I. It's a mm, really inefficient way to work. It is. It is. And then yeah. Although on the other it. hand, you hear that it is. You often hear from writers that they have to have more than one thing going mm. because when something's giving them trouble, they've got something else to work on. Yeah, yeah. I find that's true. But there comes a point where you do just have to finish it. And I'm, <laughs> I'm a bit like that with my middle grade at the moment. Um, so, yeah, hopefully it, it happens in the next decade. <laughs> I think a deadline is a really mm. good way for me to mm. write everything else. <laughs> mm. Yeah, everything but the book on deadline. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, publisher. <laughs> <laughs> And just um, to kind of wrap things up, I want to ask you both, what is your favourite thing about writing? Good question. Yeah, that is. Um, it's a tough one. 
<laughs> I, w- I would say there's two. I mean, I love that feeling um, of when you're just completely in the manuscript, you know, and you, you, it just feels good and you're just in another world. You are in the world of, of your manuscript. And it's like when you're reading and, and you're, just, you're just so um, absorbed. So I just love that feeling of being um, in that world. Um, and I think particularly writing for kids, um, it's, it's seeing their reaction. So making a kid laugh is like the best feeling in the world, I think. Um, so yeah, those are the sort of the two sides of the coin for me. Probably the exact same answer again. Mm. <laughs> I think, yeah, when you can really get into the zone and uh, the words kind of come to you, that, that always is like a really good part of writing. And then the reactions on the other side, like getting feedback from someone who's read it and, and loved it, mm. that, that's always amazing. Do you get... Do your own children love your books? Um, they have to, right? <laughs> That's the rule. <laughs> so my kids are a little bit little for Solomon, mm-hmm. although one of my little, my four-year-old's friends has been reading it, um, oh. which is hilarious. She's only four. <laughs> She's a bit young. Um, but they do pick up the picture, the picture books and ask mm-hmm their dad to read them to them which is like oh that's so nice oh, yeah. I read a lot to my eldest um when it was um not published so just to gauge his sort of reaction are you you know why are you not laughing you know that <laughs> but um and so he's at the point where he's just a bit sick of it <laughs> uh, it's good to have that test audience at home it though. is it is yeah um very um blunt feedback <laughs> you can handle it <laughs> that's good uh, yeah but um yeah they're a bit over my books but yeah, they love love reading generally, so it's great to share that with them. That's nice. It has been so nice <laughs> talking to you. Sorry, it has. I've had such a nice time. It's been so fun. <laughs> and thanks everyone for joining us. You can get both Solomon Macaroni and the Cousin Catastrophe by Ashley Barton, and How to Be Prime Minister and Survive Grave Five by Carla Fitzgerald at your local bookstore or online at Booktopia.